to everyone, and I will be conducting a workshop. My name is Antoinette Ball. I'm one of the founders of the organization We Up. But I just wanted to kind of share with you in terms of our vision for it. This is what we call one of our pace setter labs. And with our pace setter labs, what we're trying to do is kind of provide more in-depth conversations about contracting. And when I started, I don't know if you know that we have passed this proprietary course called Primetime Contracting. And when I decided to start this particular course, it was basically because I wanted, we were on a mission to really educate women of color about all the opportunities available in federal contracting. And a lot of times, sometimes you go to these workshops and they provide you with kind of a snapshot of information, but they really don't provide you with strategies and other ways where you can explore it and obtain these opportunities. So with our pace of the labs, I'm trying to encourage more of hands-on, more of providing more in-depth knowledge of the topics related to what we discuss in our classes. So subcontracting is something that's really near and dear to me because a lot of times when we think about federal contracting, we immediately think that we have to go bid on a contract. And there are opportunities in terms of subcontracting and also in, in terms of no bid contracts where if you wanna get into the federal contracting market, you can explore these contracts and work with other prime contractors. So today the conversation is going to be specifically about subcontracting and how you can kind of uh, build your capability, your capacity and try to explore subcontracting opportunities. But we wanna really give you a clear picture of subcontracting because there are some nuances that we think that you really should understand and learn as you, as you explore these opportunities. So with the pace of the labs, we're going to provide more of an in-depth conversation. Now we only have an hour, so I can't cover everything, but I can certainly provide you with an overview, overview provide you with some action items and some information so you can be skilled and understand how to explore some of these potential opportunities. So I wanna thank everybody on the call. I think I said hello to uh, Dr. Danette O'Neill, Joy T, um, Michelle, and there was one other, I think Philana joined us. So we're just gonna go ahead and dive into the conversation, but uh, I would like you to also utilize the chat to share any information or to make comments because I will be monitoring and looking at the chat as well. So let me go to the first slide. So the agenda for today, we're gonna to talk about overview of subcontracting, uh, understanding some of the rules. I'm gonna go into SBA resource directories because the SBA has some great resource directories. We're gonna talk about research strategies and I'm gonna provide some case examples. Uh, because this workshop really is about strategies. What is your subcontracting strategy and how can you be successful at subcontracting? Uh, with the show, of, with actually in the chat room, can you share with me, is anybody currently doing federal contracting? And let me look at the chat. Okay, Michelle said, hey, hello. Okay, Michelle, I have your NACES code. Is anybody currently doing any subcontracting that's on the line right now? Yes or no, you can respond by saying yes or no. So in the chat room, let me know, yes or no, if you're doing any, any subcontracting at the, at the current time. And I'm looking at the chat. Not at this time, Falana, okay. No, no, not at the, okay, great. Okay, so let's get into the conversation. First of all, it's so important to know, we all have an idea what a subcontractor is, right? Basically, a subcontractor is one that enters into agreement with a prime contractor uh, to complete a portion of the scope of work outlined in the contract. So basically, you are going to be working. A subcontractor does not assume the full responsibility for their contract. You, in essence, work for someone else. And when you enter into a subcontract agreement, it's usually a legally bound requirements to perform a specific scope of the work in a contract. Uh, so the prime contractor would hold the subcontractor liable with expectations to complete that scope of work. And further down the line, we will be we will be talking about what you should consider in your contract. But basically, you're coming in and you're doing a portion of the scope of the work. You're not doing the entire contract, which may make it a little bit easier for you to uh, comply by the requirements of that contract. So you'll be working with someone else and doing the scope of that particular work. And that basically is what a subcontractor is. And I'm going to further into the conversation, I go into some of the requirements as well. So 
unlike prime contract, the subcontract, subcontracts do not work directly with the government. So if you're a prime contractor, you're going to be work. If you're a subcontractor, you're going to be working directly with that prime contractor. Also, when prime contractors are awarded contracts, you have to meet a you have to do perform a specific scope of the work that is usually outlined in your contract. And also, it's, it's, it's important to note that government federal agencies, agencies receiving federal contracts are required by law to do outreach to small businesses. So this, again, is an opportunity for you as a woman-owned small business with the certification to procure some type of a contract with a big prime contractor. Because in most cases, they are required by law to do outreach to small businesses. And you, in fact, as a subcontractor, are help them to fulfill those responsibilities by law. So we want us to make that make that clear that uh, if you have your certifications as a woman on small business, as an economic disadvantaged woman on small business, as a minority business, then you want to leverage this to potentially be a prime, be a subcontractor working with the prime because again, they can check that box that they are in fact doing outreach. And again, some of the contracts require some of those big companies to show that they are doing outreach and actively doing business with small businesses. So well, let's talk about the, re let me go back for a second. And, um, and we will be talking about, in our, in our presentation last week, we talked a lot about the federal acquisition regulation. And I hope that everybody on the call is familiar with that because in our presentation, the, the FAR is very important in terms of you understanding what are the requirements. And if you're going to do federal contracting, it is so important for women on small businesses to understand some of the policies and procedures that are outlined in the FAR. And that is one of the action items that I'm going to ask everybody on this call to do because I can't go into detail about what's laid out in the FAR, but this is something that if you want to pursue prime or subcontracting, then you need to be familiar with what we call uh, all the regulations outlined in FAR number 44, because they have a detailed information about subcontracting policies and procedures. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, so that's very important for you, you to become familiar with the requirements and the guidelines in FAR part number 44. Is there anybody on the call that's familiar with the Federal Act? I know Danette is. I know you are really familiar with the FAR, you've been to several classes, but I want to make sure everybody else on the call is really familiar with um, all the policies outlined in the FAR. So George has said, but very much interested to explore. Okay, so I'm going to share with you in this presentation, the acquisition.gov, and I'm going to also share with you all the different regulations that you can research on your own and make sure that you become very familiar with, because even as a subcontractor, it is so important for you to understand all the policies, rules, regulations, and acquisition, especially as you grow to be a prime contractor. That's so important. Are there any questions or comments about the FAR? Okay, no, no. Okay, great. So we go on to the next. Uh, but one of the things I want to really emphasize about being a subcontractor is the fact that even as a subcontractor, you have to have a legal document. And if you're going to be a subcontractor and work with the prime contractor, this legal document is going to be a binding agreement that defines your, the expectations and the scope of the work. This is so important. So if you're thinking about doing subcontract work, you cannot go in without a contractor. Uh, also, as a subcontractor, even though you're a subcontractor, if you're working as a subcontractor on a federal contract, that you need to understand all the compliance requirements uh, for affirmative action, anti-discrimination laws, uh, and you need to make sure that the prime contractor lays all that out for you in the subcontract contract. So, so important because if you're not aware of those, then uh, you really can't perform the work like you should. So, so important. So as you are having a conversation with the prime contractor, and they provide you with a contract, you need to make sure that all this is laid out in your subcontract. Uh, so also a subcontract agreement should include very pertinent information. If you notice at the bottom of the slide, I said that if you're a subcontractor, make sure you have a contract that identifies all the parties involved, 
make sure that, that the scope of work is clearly, clearly outlined, that if there's any change orders that you have that outlined in your contract, that any insurance requirements for you as a subcontract is like, hey, this is what's required. Any disputes that you may encounter with that prime, that you have some kind of dispute resolution, resolution clause. And also if the contract is gonna be terminated, what are the termination details? You don't wanna make any kind of financial investment and you look around and 30 days later, your contract is terminated. So there should be termination details in terms of any conversation or how, what kind of notice you need, if, if they can terminate within 30 days, whatever those requirements are. So even as a subcontractor, it is so important for you to have an agreement with that prime contractor that lays everything out clearly for you. So as you think about going into a subcontract agreement, think about every conceivable thing that you want to have laid out. And that's including, and I didn't uh, make a clause here for compensation. How are you going to get paid? When are you going to get paid? How much are you going to get paid? All that should be laid out in an agreement. Now, we do recommend that you actually hire an attorney or have someone with some kind of legal background. And you don't need an attorney because there's some professionals that can actually look at a contract and provide you with some information. But we do recommend that you have somebody look at your contract to make sure that you have everything outlined in that contract, every conceivable thing outlined in that particular contract to make sure that it not only protects you, but it outlines everything that's required for you to do for that prime contract. So that's so important. And I don't know how much experience people on the call have with, the, with uh, having contracts, but that's very, very important. I know with me as an organization, even when I'm doing a scope of work, even as an independent consultant, whenever you do a scope of work, it is so important to just have everything laid out. I've, I've you know, heard of so many situations where people went into situations without contracts and they, at the end of the day, they didn't protect their copyrighted information or they didn't have anything protected in the contract. And it's, it's like, it's just a very typical situation. So make sure you protect yourself with those contracts if you're thinking about subcontracting. That's very important. Okay, I wanna make clear in terms of uh, subcontracting to me is a great business strategy. So what we encourage entrepreneurs to think about subcontract because one, it increases your capability and it builds your business performance. Uh, number two, you don't have these responsibility for the entire contract. So that means that it, will, it alleviates some of that financial responsibility. Uh, so that's very important. And also you're basically just performing a scope of the work. So you're not, you're not responsible for that entire contract. You can come in, do your work, get paid, get compensated, dip in, dip out. Uh, and also it, you have the opportunity to really build your skills and then you learn from another company. So as you're doing a contract, you can kind of have an idea what the other company is doing. You're building your skills, you're learning. Uh, and it's very advantageous for you as a company. And then as you're building your capability statement, this experience goes on your capability statement. So when you want to take that next step and pursue that prime contract, then that capability can be displayed on your capability statement. And also you can leverage your certification as a women-owned or disadvantaged-owned small business with prime contractors, because guess what? They're looking for you and they're looking for you to fulfill those responsibilities because they have to check boxes. So they have to let the, if they're procuring um, federal contracts, they have to let the federal agency know, we are doing outreach to make sure that we provide opportunities for women-owned and minority-owned businesses. So you could help them fulfill those, those obligations by being available for them as a subcontractor. Any comments, suggestions? Great. Here are some action items. I'm not gonna be able to go into the FAR and explain everything about uh, some of the subcontracting rules, but here's some things I want you to pay close attention to. Uh, FAR 19.7, which talks about small business contracting procedures. Uh, FAR 44, subcontracting policies and procedures. FAR 52, contract terms and conditions. FAR 52, utilization of small business concerns. Uh, also small business contracting, subcontracting plans and subcontracts for commercial items. 
And these are all listed in the FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulation. And in our presentation last week, you should know that the FAR is located at acquisition.gov. I do have a slide for that. And you can look at all this information online. So for anybody in the call that's not familiar with going online, looking at the FAR, then everything is online. And Danette, I know you've been on the FAR looking at some of these areas, right? And I know some of it is really like- Many, many times I find, um, even though I've been in there, I mean, for, for, I mean, as long as I've known you and been working with you, it's still sometimes very, um, I, I have to read it slow. I have to reread it. Sometimes it's, it's, it's quite technical and until I can dissect it, you know? Okay, and we, we try to tell people that it's, it's a lot of technical information, but it might be that you read a chapter here, a chapter there, because if you're serious about really going into being a prime contract and going into federal contracting, you really, you really are gonna to have to understand and know some of this stuff. Uh, and you don't have to memorize it. Uh, I know it's boring. We're just saying, understand some of the nuances that's going to be advantageous for you, some of the policies and procedures, just, just to make sure that you're protected, to make sure you know what you're doing is so important. Anybody else on the call have any experience with, with looking at the FAR? Okay. Uh, I have one question. Uh, it's not about the FAR, but uh, like suppose when we are going for subcontracting, who is the one who's paying you? Is the prime contract or? That is a good question. Uh, the one that's going to be paying you is a prime contractor. Okay. And that's why I said it's so important that when you work with the prime contractor, and what, what I laid out in the previous slide is the fact that you have to have a contract. And one of the things that you should, you should have laid out in your contract, I don't care when the prime contractor is getting paid, even if the prime contractor has to wait for their money, you want to make sure that you're compensated. So when you do a contract with that prime contractor, you can say, I expect to be paid monthly or I expect to be paid when I submit my invoices. So you have to, you have to make sure that your compensation is, a, you have agreed upon compensation prior to going into that contract with that prime contractor. So it's really up to you to make sure that you're getting paid and compensated for what you're doing and in a timely fashion. And if you run, go ahead, Georgia, I'm sorry. Yeah. So another thing is like, how do we go and find like who has got the contract? Is there a website or do we need to be registered for something? So we can know like in our, as per our NAICS code, like this is the, uh, company who has got the contract? How do we find those people? Oh, and that's a good question because part of the presentation is I'm going to, once I provide, finish with a little bit of an overview, I'm going to give you what I call my, I call it my lead magnets. And in my lead magnets, I'm going to give you enough information where what you can do is kind of look at potential opportunities. It's kind of like you're doing market research. Uh -huh. So you can identify some potential opportunities that are no bids. And what okay. kind of registration do we need to have to work with the like federal government? What kind of registration? Yeah, do we have to be certified something like uh, like woman owned business? Like uh, we have to be certified or we can work otherwise also. Okay, so, so what I want to, because I was thinking that some of you want to call went to our workshop prior, but I didn't have a slide that really identified federal contracting, what you need to do to do federal contracting, uh, because I was assuming that, are you registered, Georgia, in the system for ward management? I'll say, say that again, I could follow you. Are you registered in the system for ward management? Uh, not for the federal, but for the New York City. Okay. Well, let me uh, just provide a brief overview for anybody on the call, because this workshop was a continuation of the workshop that we had last week. Oh, and I was order, there. Yeah, in order to, and, and I, you can look at the recording, but I, I give you a brief overview, and then I'll share the recording with you because it's going to be posted online. But in okay. order to do this is, as a subcontractor, you have to be an assistant for award management. And that is the first step for anybody wishing to do business uh, as a prime or a subcontract. 
And we did a presentation last week and we went over the requirements for doing federal contracting. And that's why I didn't include it in this presentation. But we do, we'll have that listed online if you wanted to go over it, that particular requirements. But you have to be in the system for board management. Uh, and we do recommend that you have one of your, your WSB with the Women on Small Business Certification. So it's almost like you have to be contract ready. You have to be set up to do business as a uh, prime contractor to do to even be a subcontractor. So that's very, very important. Okay. So Georgia, uh, I will still go through the presentation. It will be invitations for you and for Michelle or anybody else on the call. Uh, I know, Danette, I know you're already in, in the stand and, and WSB. You should have to renew yours. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, I don't know. If, Michelle, are you in the stand? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Okay, so Michelle's in the film. So George, I'll share that presentation with you. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I was, I was just going over that, the, the fact that I thought that, that being a subcontractor is basically a good business strategy. And I just went over the capabilities, the certifications, and the opportunities that being a subcontractor has for you uh, overall. Uh, we went over the FAR, and I'm sorry, because I have to go back to that slide. We went over the FAR, and these are your action items of the areas of the FAR that you should study. And Georgia, these are uh, areas that you can study as well. And I want to talk a little bit about, you talk, you mentioned Georgia about where do you find subcontracting opportunities? And, uh, and let okay. me go over some of the directories because this is in fact a website. But one thing that, I don't know if you know that, that there's a subcontracting database called Subnet Portal that the okay. federal government has. And in the sub subnet portal, what they do is they list actually companies go on and they list potential subcontracting opportunities. Okay. And then here are three other directories. Uh, the GSA has a directory, DOD, Department of Defense has a di directory, and SBA has a directory. So let me switch real quick to showing you the subnet portal to give you an idea of. Let me stop sharing my presentation for a second. I hope I can swing back and forth and share my screen. I'm not. And give you an idea. Now here, you, everybody see, does everybody see my screen? Mm -mm. Oh, let me go again, share screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, this is a great site. This is sba.gov. And on this particular site, it talks about prime and subcontracting. If you notice, they have on the, the content here, you have prime contracting, subcontracting with small businesses, awards. So let me just show you quickly what their directories are. Here are the following directories that subcontracting with small businesses. And if you're, if you're searching for subcontracting opportunities, they are posted in the following directories managed by the SBA. So let me click on the first subnet directory. When you click on this directory, right, you see a map that comes up. Is my screen showing? Yes. And you could actually go to Georgia. Like I know, like for example, Georgia, you're in New York. You can go to New York. Yes. So we're gonna go to Georgia right here. We're gonna click on Georgia and we're gonna select. And when Georgia comes up, what happens is you see, you see the listing of all the opportunities. Mm -hmm. So for example, we know that the name of this company is called Dushash Logistics Group LLC. They're located in Atlanta uh, and they're looking for, and it's, they describe, if you look at additional NASIS code, they describe what they're looking for. Um, telecommunications, civic and social organizations, to do janitorial, document preparation, marketing research, public opinion polling, landscape architect, uh, payroll services. And then they also give you a closing date, like they're looking for subcontractors until September 1st, 2023. And what I like about this site is they actually give you a point of contact and an email address. So if you, when you go into the subcontracting directory, and you see anything that you have an interest in, for example, there's an SOL eLearning 1001. And 
The place of performance is going to be California, Florida, Georgia, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, South Carolina. The performance date is, is now, and they're looking for management consulting services. But if you notice, the closing date is, is on uh, August 2023. And then here's the, uh, Cheryl Powell is the point of contact, and this is her email address. So basically, when you go into these subnet portals, it tells you what they're looking for. It provides you with the closing date, and it provides you with a point of contact. So guess what, what I would do if I were you? I would look at the list, and I would reach out and have conversations with the, the email addresses and the phone numbers, which they normally don't include phone numbers, are here for you. Oh, that's nice. So this would be a great, if you go by, you can, you can click by city, you can click, I mean, by state, and you can go in and out of these portals and make contact. This is a great example of market research. Jeanette, have you ever uh, utilized the subnet portal for? In, in um, when I've been in your office several times and when looking up other businesses to mm -hmm. look at their capacities um, and some of the things that they have done in the past mm -hmm. and how to position myself to um, be a sub under them. You know, mm -hmm. what kind of company they are, first of all, you know, because you just don't want to work with anybody because all money is not good money, you know. Right. And, and you could go by city and city, like whatever, whichever city you're in, you can look at the sub. And, and now all these are kept up to date. But to me, this is a great first point of contact for uh, doing market research uh, because it has all the information here for you. So I recommend as you, as you start thinking about and Georgia, this just answers one of your questions. This is a directory mm -hmm. listed on the site that you can go into to look for opportunities. Okay. Can and you this is this link? And, go ahead. I'm sorry. Can you please share this link? Yes, but uh, but I also, if you notice, this is an SBA site. Yeah. So if you notice, let me show you how I got to this particular site. If you notice, uh -huh. you can go great. Uh, you can go straight to the sba.gov mm -hmm. and I encourage you all to use SBA society and this is on the sba.gov subcontract with small businesses okay and this is any they have active links right here so you can also the GSA has a subcontracting director for small if I click on this link it takes me directly into the GSA's subcontracting directory okay. with information Okay, thank you. Uh, so all of this is right. Department of Defense subcontract opportunity direct directory. Mm -hmm. I can't go on that particular. But what, what I'm saying is if you go on an SBA site, everything is here for you. Yeah, I saw that. See, just, so all you have to do is go to the SBA.gov contract yeah. guide, and then you can navigate, navigate that this is a great resource for anybody looking for sub. They talk about prime contracting, subcontracting, subcontracting plans. They talk about the dynamic small business search. Uh, they talk about set aside contracts. So in doing your re compliance reviews, so in doing your research, yes. I recommend that you go and utilize this site. <laughs> it's a great resource site. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking into the one in the New York and it there is a lot of opportunities right here. Oh, oh so you're going into New York and the, okay. Yeah. So this is what I call my league magnets. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're more than welcome. And also when I was talking earlier, I'm going to, since I'm out I'm online right now, I wanted to bring your attention to the acquisition.gov that we talked about last week, that when you want to learn about the FAR, you go straight to acquisition.gov. Then you can click on the browse the FAR. And then it comes up where all those, you know, when I told you that you should, for example, understand what goes on in FAR part 44, it's right here. You can click on 44 and then it talks about subcontracting policies and procedures. So in that action item that I gave to you, you can just basically go to acquisition.gov and you can click on any of those chapters and review the information in those particular chapters, which is a great, great resource for you. Okay. So let me stop sharing and go back to my presentation if I can get back to it. <laughs> Uh, can you all see it? Yeah, thank you so much. It is so useful. I never knew about these things. Um, no, I don't see your screen yet. Mm -mm. Okay. Let me go back in. Okay, let me.
Let me get back to the presentation. So tell me what you can. Uh, I can see the presentation, um, but it's not. Um, okay, there it, goes. there it goes. Okay, let me go back to where I was. Okay, so make sure that in this slide you go to what I just showed you the far. You make sure you visit all those different chapters, and and I included in this in the presentation also the um, all these different directories that you can access from SBA.gov. And then I showed you the an example of the subnet portal where you can actually look at the opportunities. So we're going to talk a little bit about the procurement forecast again because I just went from acquisition.gov and I wanna give you a strategy that I think is very, very important because uh, one of the strategies that I wanted to bring to your attention is the fact that when you're looking for potential prime contractors, you can go to acquisition.gov and look at forecast reports. Uh, and that was the site that we were just on. But I, I pulled, what I did is I went to a forecast report yesterday and I wanted to get an idea like what was posted. So I went into the housing and, and urban development. I went into their forecast report and I pulled out just a little snippet of what is on their forecast reports. And if you're on a, if you're on a call and don't understand what a forecast report is, basically we talked about this last week, a forecast report is where the federal government will, will project out what they're gonna do for the fiscal year, right? So forecast report is not yet a bid, it is an opportunity for you to take a look at what the government is forecasting out that they're going to do, okay? And the site that we just went to, acquisition.gov, there's a tab that goes directly into these forecast reports where, let me tell you why it is important for you as you think about subcontracting. You wanna look at the forecast reports and if you notice the arrow that I have, you see that arrow that says recompete? It basically has what the, the it's basically stating that the federal government is going to recompete, or this is a contract, it's a million to $2 million contract. And the contract is for HUD coaching and development support services, coaching and development services in a virtual technology based environment to include program support, deployment, behavior science, et cetera, et cetera. So if you were interested in being a subcontractor on this particular contract, because it's a recompete, what you would do is do your research to see who in fact was awarded that contract. And because this is a forecast report, you can in fact reach out to, to that contracting officer, Michael Thompson, and just have a conversation. And, and actually, you can actually go into databases to see who has a contract and who's recompeting on it. Or you can have a, con a conversation with the contracting officer to talk about it and to get an idea who the the prime contractor is on this particular contract. Does that make sense with strategy? Then you look like you're thinking. No, this is what I was taught to do by you and, okay. um, and, and Mary for early on. So I knew about this. Okay. But if you notice, I, oh, it's, wait. also there was a bid that I put in and um, and I lost the bid because it went to a veteran, and actually somebody else who lost called me. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and 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 wanted to get together for a future contract. Um, it was real estate related um, to 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 find some rental space for um, a, a new VA facility, and she called me, and so now we collaborate. Right, and you and I, you may want to do your research to kind of see if they if they are already a prime contractor. I would say in, in one of the databases I'm getting ready to introduce, you may want to look at their profile to see specifically what they're doing in terms of the with that contract. You can get a lot of information to do market research because you want to make sure that state hypothetically, if you are going to be a subcontractor, you may want to make sure you compensate it. So that gives you an idea of how much they have contract out because you don't want to be underpaid either and then you you do your research to look at how much they uh how much was that potential it was it a 15 million dollar contract because you want to make sure that you're compensated but if you notice on here also i want to point out that 
when I looked at the housing and urban developments forecast, there's some opportunities for new contracts too. And I don't know if, if you notice, they're doing things in virtual collaboration, which means that it expands your reach of what you can do because you can work in a virtual environment. Now, on the housing and urban development, they had two potential wars, total small business. This is their small one for 10 to 25,000. They have another one for 100 to 200,000. So it might be that you go on the housing and urban development where we went from acquisition.gov and look at not only the recompetes, but look at the new contract opportunities. And Jeanette, especially for you, I would recommend when you, because you do training and education that you need to look at some of, you see this, this one for total small business, these two right here. One is for a hundred to 200. So you may want to take a look into what that new contract uh, potentially, because it could be another no bid, which means that it could be a sole source or a set aside because it's total small business. Okay. okay. So is everybody clear? I, I don't want to, you know, I know we have some new people on the call. Is, is everybody clear about that as a strategy? George and Michelle, you have any questions? No. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Bye. Okay. Let me move on. But another great database that I utilize is USA Spending. And I don't know, does anybody on, on the call utilize USA Spending? No, yes, okay. Because USA uh, Spending is a great site to, for obtaining specific geographical and spending information to give you a quick snapshot of what a businesses are doing. And let me, this is a quick snapshot of usaspending.gov. Uh, and you could go in here and you could, you could, you could search by agency you could search by object class, you know, commodities, and basically it provides you with a really great overview. So let me give you an example. Uh, one of the things that I search by is what we call recipient profiles. And when you're thinking about exploring doing your market research on a federal contractor, what you can do is actually go in and look at their profile. And one of the profiles that I did look at uh, recently was, uh, this is an example of, of um, Nicole Parker. She has a company called the Elosa Group, and she secured about $20 million in federal contracting. And if you want to get an idea, like say hypothetically, you may want to work with her, or you may want to see what she's doing, or you may want to be a competitor, uh, you can go in on the and look at her profile, her recipient profile. So let me go, let me hop back, hop back to where I was before. <laughs> Go online. Can you see my screen yet? Anybody no. see my screen? Okay. I'm gonna get good at doing this. <laughs> so I'm gonna share screen. There we go. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, one thing about USA Spending, you see how I put in, I went to recipient profile. I basically put in her name, the Elosa Group, and it provides you with a great overview of this particular company. So if you notice, it provides you with, uh, she had 15 transactions at $1.3 million. And then you go down and it says transactions over time, what years she's been doing federal contracting, what quarters, and then it has her top five agencies that she received money from. And then a NASIS codes. So when you go on recipient profiles, it gives you an overview. And again, this goes back to market research because you're in, the, you're in essence doing market research on this particular company, right? So you can go on, you, it tells you the business time. She's, a, she's also not only, she's 8 8 program participant, She's a Black American owned woman owned business. Uh, she, she's DOT certified disadvantaged business enterprise. Uh, she's self certified as a small as a small disadvantaged business. That's interesting. Uh, she's a SDB small disadvantaged business, and she's basically all her designations and shows you where she her office is located and shows you all her 
you could even view the awards for this. You could view all of her awards by clicking on all of her awards. So you see how this is great for great for market research. And this gives you an example of all the awards that she received by the award number, data performance, award amount. But you see how great this is? So when you do your market research, you can go on here and you can gather all this information. Like, like for example, Danette, you're thinking about doing business with this particular company. You can go on spending USA Spending and you can gather some market research information. You, you see what I'm saying? And it's very detailed. And then on this particular USA Spinner, you can you can you can go by year, you can go by award type. It's a really extensive database that I recommend that if you're looking for some market research, you want to search a recipients. This is a great, and I'm only going. I mean, the capacity of the site. You could actually do advanced searches. You can you can search by agencies. You can do federal accounts. You can go to any, into these states. You can go to COVID nineteen spending. And then it's a great site for resources. They have a glossary uh, of information, data, and then you can you can customize. I'm not going going to go into detail about how you can you can get customized reports from this particular database. But basically, I would recommend that you just do recipient research and then get in here, take a look at it, uh, kind of play around in advanced search keyword. You can do keyword search by different NASIS codes. So it has a lot of great information on here. So again, this is just a resource for you, okay? Another place where you can get market research information. Okay, I'm gonna go back into my PowerPoint. Can you see my PowerPoint, Tasha? No. Okay. Okay. Everybody still with me? Let me go back and <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen. Go back to my PowerPoint. I'm getting good at doing this. We play from the start. We go back. Okay. So everybody uh, agree with me with the recipient profile. And I want to show the USA spending because I wanted to kind of give you an idea in terms of, of how you can share that, how you can go into it, just get that information. It's quick, easy. You don't have to go through any, you don't have to register and you can just pull information on companies that you want to do business with. Just look at their profile to see what kind of contracts they receive. She's a great company. She spoke for our organization several times. I love her. She's doing phenomenal business with the federal government. And in fact, she started as a subcontractor and she grew from a subcontractor to a prime contractor. So this is a great, if you want to hear, read about her story, her name is Nicole Parker with the LOSA Group. Please look her up and do your research. I also want to talk about press releases. How many, of you, how many of you ladies really look at press releases? I look at press releases all the time. I'm always raising money for the organization. So I'm like, who is doing what? But one thing I can say is there, there are press releases about federal contracting. And here's just an example uh, of some of the press releases. The Health and, Health and Human Services awarded a $17 million contract uh, to provide online access for news and business databases. His, another press release, did you know Ernst & Young is a, a big federal contractor? They, they received a contract, a $43 million contract from the GSA uh, for a five-year contract to replace Dun & Bradstreet. So they in fact had to, uh, just secured the contract that Dun & Bradstreet had to provide entity validation services currently known as the Data Universal Number System. So this is a press release because press releases will show you who are the big prime contractors. So we know that the fact that now Ernst & Young has a $43 million contract 
then guess what? They are they are a big they are now a big prime contractor, and that could be contract opportunities for uh, women and minority owned businesses. Also, uh, and I use this as an example because one of my entrepreneurs was actually selected on a, a NASA selects 13 vendors for a $175 million open innovation services contract. Uh, and one of our entrepreneurs was selected as the contract on this particular award from NASA, another press release. Uh, Centra, I know you. everybody heard of Accenture. Uh, Accenture Federal Services wins a $118 million contract from the U.S. Department of State for data management services. So I'm saying it to say that looking at press releases are a phenomenal way to see what's going on in the federal contract. And guess what? It is your lead magnet for potential subcontract opportunities because you can go on, look at USA Spending, look at their recipient profile, look at the contract, and you. this is how you want to kind of posture yourself to potentially be a subcontractor. Another way to connect with prime contractors for potential opportunities, and this is a strategy that was shared with me with one of my entrepreneurs, is that I know you know like when, even on the state, county, when, when you see those, what we call all those pre-bid meetings, right? And when solicitations come out for on the state level, on the county level, et cetera, even those solicitations where they're getting federal funds, that they hold what you call pre-bid meetings. So when they do an RFP or an invitation for bid, they make an announcement through a bid notice and they ask any interested vendors to come out for a pre-bid meeting. And guess what? Even if you're not thinking about bidding on that particular opportunity, this is a great place for you to meet who? Prime contractors. Because you know that prime contractors are going out to these meetings. And I have so many scenarios where I have my entrepreneurs go out and they would go and they would actually go to these pre-bid meetings, not only to meet the prime contractors, but guess what? Anybody at the pre-bid meeting, they release what they call everybody in attendance. So you get a list of anybody that attended that meeting so it's not, so this is again, your market research. So you're getting a list of who attended that meeting. And then guess what? This is part of your market. You can reach out to them because if they win that contract, they're going to be looking for you. So this again is yet another strategy for you to uh, pursue. Does that sound great for everybody? Yes. And Danette, do you ever go out to any pre bed meetings? Yes, I did it with Atlanta Housing here. Um, I've done two with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I want to share with you another what I call, I call these things lead magnets, right? So I know everybody probably heard about the SBA Mentor Protege Program. Yes, no. So another okay. lead magnet is the, the SBA Mentor, even though you're not thinking about the SBA Mentor Protege Program, but on the SBA website, they have an active list of mentor protege agreements, which is basically, to me, this is invaluable for your market research because if you are reviewing a, all the companies that have active mentor protege agreements means that they are interested in doing business with, with minority and women owned businesses, correct? So when you go on and you download that mentor protege agreement, guess what? You get a list of all these companies. It not only shows you the protege, it provides you with the mentor. So I would pay close attention to all the companies that are serving as mentors to these protégés because they could be potentially an opportunity for you to get a subcontract. And that means that when you get this list, you go on this list and you start doing your research. You may go to the recipient profile at, at usaspending.gov then you look at the mentor. What is Pyramid Systems doing? Uh, KPMG doing? Uh, when did they get the contract? So you see how you're putting one and two together. You're gathering the information. You're utilizing, and I'm just talking about the one database. You're utilizing a database to look at what they're doing, and you're gathering your market research because you want to potentially get your feet wet with some kind of subcontract opportunity. So this is like you're in your information gathering kind of stage. Does all this make sense? I get excited, so I'm, I'm kind of bringing everything together. So I recommend that you utilize as a lead magnet those pro mentor protege agreements 
And in, in the presentation, you'll get a copy of this. It's gonna outline specifically, again, SBA site is a great resource I talked about. All you have to do is Google SBA mentor protege agreements, pull up this list, it's a vast list and utilize this for part of your market research. Let me give you a case example because I wanna show you a really good case example before I run out of time in terms of my presentation. But here's a, uh, a great case example of a company that's looking, that has subcontract opportunities. And I got this information. I went to an OSPADU conference, the Office of Small Business Disadvantage Utilization. And this is one of the companies that actually did a presentation. It's called air.org. Now air.org, and you may want to write this down because this can be part of your research as well. Air.org is, is actually looking for subcontractors. And they're looking for subcontractors in the following areas. Data collection and management, interview, survey, focus groups, evaluation, technical assistance, conference and logistics services, training materials and development, transcriptions, and this goes on and on, especially health and education, web development. And to me, it fits, it really fits in well with some of the people on the call. I know Danette right away, education, evaluation, technical assistance, outcome. This could be a great company where you could actually secure a subcontracting opportunity. And let me tell you how you uh, partner. They have on their site contracting and partnering with a AIR. And they would tell you specifically how you can partner and how you can contract out with them. And it is a great, they did a great presentation. They're like, we're looking for women, women in business. We're looking for subcontractors. And I just kind of wanted to share this as an example to show you like, any company that you're looking for to do subcontracting, do your homework, do your due diligence, go to their sites, go look at how they partner, go look at their opportunities, look at the recipient profiles, do all the things that you need to do to get an idea of what these companies are doing. So this is just an example of uh, a company that you can potentially, and it, it may be that you basically just utilize this for your market research in terms of, of exploring opportunities. Does all this that make sense? And we are slowly running out of time. Let me, and I wanted to get to the part where anybody has questions, but basically I wanted to just provide an overview of subcontracting and why we are so passionate about subcontracting and all the kind of strategies. We couldn't cover everything. And in our pace at the last, we, we go into topics by in depth, more in-depth on specific topics, but I wanted to give you a great overview and just kind of whet your appetite and say that, hey, this could be a possibility of everybody on the call. So somebody said, in Georgia, you said you're excited. Great. <laughs> yeah, I, I never knew like these kind of opportunities are there. Now that you shared about subcontracting, like I feel like this is the area I should really go for it. Yeah, and I wanted to share like one resource that I'm, and I was trying to find an example that was really pretty broad that, I mean, I would say that as you think about subcontracting, that you really kind of take that kind of strategy. I see Shatika. How, how are you doing, Shatika? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. Okay. You, are you in a situation where you could talk? I'm driving, going to pick up the kids. Okay, now have you been in a position where you you've been able to subcontract or any any kind of because I know you've been studying with this for a while. Share with us like where you are right now in terms of are you doing any subcontracts or anything like that. Shatigua? Okay, maybe she lost it. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. I lost you. What did you say? What did you say? I'm no, sorry, I'm driving. Are you doing any subcontracting opportunities right now? No, but I was just looking at that air.org that you just gave us, and I'm interested in looking into it. Okay, okay. And it's, everything's right online, I'm saying. You know, you can go on, and I would say recommend for anybody on the call. That was just one example. And also, earlier in the call, I went on housing and urban development, I recommend everybody in the call look at that forecast report because they do have some new contract opportunities that could be a, a set of a no bid or a set aside of sole source. And they do, you can look at some of the primes that are recompeting as well to kind of explore those opportunities as well. So I wanted to basically on this call, give you one or two strategies 
that I think would be really advantageous if you want to explore subcontracting. And I really hope they were useful. Okay, so are there any other questions regarding, uh, Angela said, this is great information. I did not know I could search like this, yes. And, and this is only one of the sites. In our class, we go over about four or five databases, but I thought USA Spending was a great, you can go into that, you have to log in. It was a great uh, opportunity for you just to research what we call recipients. So it gives you an idea what the prime contracts are doing. So we recommend that you uh, research that. We're gonna take this call, uh, put it online and share with you the presentation as well. So um, are there any more questions, input? I hope this information was valuable and useful for everybody on the call. I'm excited, I hope you are. <laughs> I am. I'm going straight to air.org. <laughs> and I think that would be great. Connect air.org would be great. I have another company too that I want to share with you is uh, that I, I couldn't go over all the companies. I think in, a, in another presentation, what I might just do is companies and I might just say, here are the opportunities and just do a presentation about four or five companies. This is what's going on. These are the new contracts. And that might be invitations from a contractor. So you know exactly like when I leave the call, I'm going to pursue. Mm -hmm. yeah that'll be good okay okay great with that said we are right on time and i want to thank everybody for coming on the call today if you and let me i think my email is in the chat box yes mm -hmm. a at weapp.org if anybody wants to reach out we're going to be networking on wednesday wednesday evening so if anybody on the call wants to join us please feel free to do so so until then, I'm going to, okay, wait, Michelle said, are you to connect me with companies that are looking for partners that can fill orders for the tech? Okay, Michelle, now part of what I gave you was a lot of research. So I would recommend you going to spending, uh, usaspending.gov and put in your NASIS code. And then what you can do is companies that are specializing in your particular area will come up. And that's where you can start your uh, point of reference. It's so important that you do that research. I would recommend going to acquisition.gov and doing, uh, going into different agencies, but going to USA Spending, putting in that NASIS code, and then looking at the recipient profiles to find companies that are doing similar for you. Okay. And if you have any questions, Michelle, just reach out to me. Okay. Got it. Thank, thank you. A lot of the things we give you is, you know, you have to go in and do your own research. And from time to time, we will give you some leads from our, what, what we call our lead magnets especially if companies reach out to us and looking for like scanslers looking for subcontractors and contracting. So as they reach out to us, we'll share the information with our whole circle of women. Okay. Mm -hmm. But until next time, I want to thank everybody and uh, we're going to end the workshop and goodbye. Mm -hmm.